Perhaps you heard of the term dementia. Dementia is not a disease or condition, but rather it describes a group of symptoms caused by a number of different diseases and conditions which fall into two categories. Those that are potentially treatable and reversible if identified and treated soon enough, and those that are irreversible and progressive. Let's take a closer look at each of these categories. Some of the known potentially treatable and reversible forms of dementia include improper use of medications, alcohol, or other substances, brain tumors, nutritional deficiencies, infections such as urinary tract or bladder infections, which are very common in older people, metabolic disorders including electrolyte imbalance, thyroid and renal problems, head trauma, normal pressure hydrocephalus, which is fluid buildup on the brain, and depression, which if untreated can mimic an Alzheimer's type dementia in older persons. Some of the known irreversible and progressive forms of dementia include Alzheimer's disease, which is the most common and well-known form of dementia. Vascular dementia caused by stroke-related activity and other vascular episodes affecting the brain. Lewy body dementia, which is caused by microscopic deposits of the Lewy body protein that form in the cortex of the brain. Parkinson's disease dementia, which usually occurs in the later stages of as many as half of all Parkinson's patients. Frontotemporal dementia caused by cell damage in areas of the brain that control planning, judgment, emotions, speech, and some types of movement. creutzfeldt jakob disease, which is a rare viral condition which causes damage in the brain that leads to dementia symptoms which happen suddenly and quickly get worse. And Huntington's disease, a brain disorder caused by a genetic defect passed through family members which usually surfaces between the ages of 30 and 50. Now let's talk a little bit about the two most common irreversible and progressive forms of dementia, Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia. Alzheimer's disease currently has no known cause or cure. It has a very slow gradual progression and because of this symptoms significant enough for the person to seek diagnosis may not occur until as much as eight years into the progression of the disease. The first noticeable symptom of this disease is usually short-term memory loss. Alzheimer's disease usually has a clinical course of 8 to 20 years of slow, gradual decline affecting memory, problem solving, reasoning, judgment, and other cognitive functions. And eventually, in the later stages, physical decline including incontinence, loss of speech, mobility, and even the ability to swallow. An easy way to visualize the clinical progression of Alzheimer's disease is to picture a large snow-covered hill. When at the top you take a snowball and roll it down the hill, what happens? Well, the snowball gets bigger and the increased weight makes it roll faster as it gets further down the hill. This is similar to the clinical progression of Alzheimer's disease. Vascular dementia is usually caused by some type of stroke-related activity. This is often a series of TIAs or transient ischemic attacks, sometimes referred to as mini-strokes. These are episodes where tiny pieces of plaque build up within the arteries, break loose and lodge somewhere in or near the brain, cutting off or restricting blood flow to usually a pinpoint part of the brain or parts of the brain. Any area of the brain denied oxygenated blood dies. When this happens in an area of the brain controlling cognitive function, this causes a vascular dementia. Unlike Alzheimer's, which has a very gradual progression, Vascular dementia has a very acute or rapid onset. The clinical course of vascular dementia is represented by a downward stair-step pattern of deterioration, where someone's condition takes a nosedive at the time of a vascular incident, and that plateaus for a period of time before eventually having another sudden decline and plateauing again with a significantly increased possibility of this pattern continuing with each new vascular episode. So how are the many different forms of dementia diagnosed? Diagnostic assessment for dementia is often referred to as dementia rule-out testing because the diagnosis of, is obtained through a process of elimination where all diseases and conditions that can cause dementia are systematically ruled out. 
diagnostic rule out testing for dementia is often done by an attending physician or specialist such as a neurologist and may include a thorough personal medical and symptom history of the individual along with a medical history of his or her family members, a thorough physical examination, a series of lab and medical tests often including analysis of blood and urine, EKG, EEG, CAT scan, MRI, or other brain imaging tests, depression screening, mental status testing, usually in the form of a mini mental state exam, and possibly a referral for further psychological or neurological testing. In conclusion, diagnostic assessment is important where dementia symptoms are present, not only to determine a proper diagnosis, but also to be able to understand the clinical course of the disease as well as what, if any, treatment options are available.